Hello, my anxious friends. <laughs> well, I hope you're not super anxious, but if you're watching this video, you probably are. And if you've watched any of my other videos, it's probably because you are. And that's why we relate to each other. And in reality, I feel like everyone suffers a little bit of anxiety. How can you not? The world is a crazy place and the universe is mind blowing and nothing really makes sense. So why can't we just have a little bit of anxiety and that be okay? The whole point of this is that we're going to try and manage it and have more balance and, and work with it and around it and so that we can have a more positive experience as we go through life. So anyways, the topic today is social media and it's something that I feel fairly passionate about because the way that it affects me, I'm sure it affects everyone else. Obviously there's been a lot of research over the years as technology has become more and more a part of our lives on how it affects human behavior, how it affects moods, how it affects just the social construct. And a lot of the information that comes out is that, you know, it's not always the most positive thing. But I think having a negative relationship or outlook on social media it really isn't gonna help us either because it's going to be here for as long as it's gonna be here. And in my opinion, you can't just completely not have it at all. I mean, if you can, good for you. But for a lot of people, we use it for connection with family, friends. A lot of us have it for work. I use it a lot for my online fit camps, obviously. And hello, YouTube and all those other things. So I want to find a way to have social media be in my life, but in a way that's going to be, for the most part, positive. So like I said before, there's been lots of research done about how it affects us and there's scientific proof, reports, research, you can go out there and find it about the fact that social media affects the dopamine in our brains. It raises up the dopamine, which is the same receptor in our brain that's affected by things like cigarettes, alcohol, gambling. It spikes up, you know, and that's what creates addiction. And I'm pretty sure a lot of us can sometimes admit that at times we do feel a little attached or addicted to our phones. How many of us out there when we wake up, the first thing we do is grab our phones and start scrolling or looking at who's messaged us or what notifications we have, or it's the last thing we look at before we go to bed or when you're at work, when you're bored. I mean, it's right in your hand, it's so accessible. And yeah, the apps that we have now are designed to create that kind of dependence, that relationship that when you see the little red dot, you have to look and we wanna see how many people have liked the content that we've put out, if they've sent us a message, if people acknowledge it's our birthday. Like we go to our social media a lot for a lot of validation. So as someone who has been alive long enough to remember the days prior to even having the internet and having apps and stuff like that, I do feel really lucky. And I want always to create some sort of balance because there have been phases of my life where I've been way more invested in my social media and constantly updating content and feeling like I have to be on there a lot throughout the day. And then there's other times where I wanna completely pull back, close all my accounts and just go back to a simpler time. A lot of the reason why we start feeling anxious when we look at our social media is because the opportunity to compare ourselves is exponential now. It's on a global scale. Back in the day, prior to having that kind of access, you maybe would compare yourself to your peers, people in your neighborhood, your town, your city, rather than across the globe. Now we can see people in our age groups all over the world or in our city that we might, might never have met. And the opportunity there for comparison is never ending. You're always gonna find someone that is maybe more successful than you, more fit than you, more socially skilled than you, better at content creation than you, more artistic, more musical, whatever it is, there's always gonna be someone out there that's better. And I just don't think that's a good thing. As well, of course, the problem is that everybody generally who posts on social media tends to post their highlight reel. We've heard this a lot before. So you're seeing people post their most successful moments in life or they can even just hide parts of their life they don't want you to see. And so we don't see the full picture, but yet that's what we're using to compare to our own lives. So how do we stop comparing? Because it's hard enough just comparing yourself to regular people in your regular life, in your regular existence, let alone all across the world. So here are just some tips that I have that might help you. And I, I strongly advise you to do these things ASAP if you sense any kind 
of anxiety when you're on your phone. Like every time I open my phone or when I used to open up my phone, I would scroll for maybe five, 10, 20 minutes, maybe longer, and always feel like a bag of shit afterwards. Like I was completely useless, that I wasn't doing anything with my life, that everybody was way further ahead than me, and that I should just go jump off a cliff. So if that happens to you, here are some tips that I have that have really changed that experience for me. Number one, curate your social media. You have the power to curate all of your social medias, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, everywhere. You have the ability to filter and censor your social media in a positive way. And by that, I mean that you can decide who you follow. For example, I used to be very much into the aesthetics of fitness, like the appearance, the way it looked, um, bodybuilding, all that sort of thing. So I followed a lot of people, trainers, women that had very specific body types that were super fit, super lean, lots of bodybuilders and stuff like that because I felt that it would inspire and motivate me to, to accomplish the goals that I had, which were similar in terms of becoming super lean, becoming a bodybuilder and things like that. But in reality, I realized that by following these pages and following this content, it didn't make me feel motivated and excited about my own journey. It just made me feel depressed and defeated and bad about myself. I also followed a lot of celebrities because I was just curious about their lives and I thought that was really exciting that we could follow celebrities and see what they're doing. Again, obviously they're only promoting and putting out like their best stuff and they're not telling you their real issues or problems. And comparing my life to people that have millions of dollars really isn't a relatable and useful thing to do. And again, it would just make me feel bad about my position in life. But when I didn't follow these people or when I wasn't thinking about that comparison, I really can acknowledge that my life is pretty awesome. Like, I love my life. I have so much gratitude in my life. But when I started looking at this kind of content all the time, it made me start to feel bad and less than. So about a year and a half ago, I started checking who I was following on all these different apps. And I really started removing a lot of pages that I knew that when I looked at these pages and the content that was promoted on them, it really didn't make me feel great about myself. And I really started gearing towards following people like comedians and content that was more relatable and people that were in the fitness world but were more relatable to me and my goals and what I value in the fitness world, which is more health, wellness, longevity, sustainability, things like that, and just like real bodies. Women that show their real bodies, like real skin texture, cellulite, just real shit and not the superposed, photoshopped, airbrushed images that are just not realistic, not attainable and not inspiring. There's a lot of stuff out there that can be inspiring that isn't that. So the people that I follow or the pages that I follow went from thousands that I was just mindlessly following and that would show up in my feed down to about like 630 pages, which still seems like a lot, but I had been following way more than that. So I really cleared out the content that I would be mindlessly looking at because at the end of the day, you're absorbing that into your brain. You're taking on that energy, whether you realize it or not at a subconscious level. And it's just something that you can change. So I challenge you to just go to the following tabs on your social media apps and start going through everything that you follow and really ask yourself kind of like the Marie Kondo thing, like, does this spark me joy? Does this make me feel excited and happy when I look at this stuff? Like, for example, baby kittens. Most people, it's gonna make you feel good. So thumbs up to baby kittens. Supermodels. Most supermodels are of not the average attainable size and height and their lifestyles are not relatable to most people. Probably, maybe not the best thing for you unless you're someone who's getting into modeling. <laughs> so give it a try, go through and see and how much you can pare down and what maybe content you can shift towards or move towards, gravitate towards that's gonna bring you joy and happiness. Maybe it's just more kittens. Tip number two, you can mute things. The mute button on social media is my favorite thing. So. There's a lot of us who are aware that maybe if we unfollow certain people or pages, we might affect someone's feelings. Maybe you're supporting a business, maybe a friend or something like that, but you realize deep down inside that when you see stuff from their 
pages their content, it doesn't make you feel good for whatever reason. And that's okay. It's just good to be honest with yourself. Maybe they're just in a different stage of life that you are aspiring to, but just not quite there yet, like in their career or relationship or something like that. And it just gives you the, a feeling that makes you just feel a little insecure and just not at peace with yourself right now. And that's okay. That may change. Maybe you just need some time to work on yourself and your own life so that you in turn can feel happy for these pages, but it's not going to happen overnight. And the reality is if you're not there emotionally and mentally, that's totally fine. You can give yourself the grace of muting these pages and you can still be a follower for them, support them in that way, but they will not be popping up into your feed and giving you like a during and like first thing when you wake up in the morning or when you're at work. It just giving yourself some like a, creating a safe space. We talk a lot now in this world about creating safe spaces for others and ourselves. And this is social media is another space where we need to do that. We need to create a safe space for ourselves. And if there's things that are making you feel unsafe, unhappy right now, it's okay to just turn them down and muting. You can do that. You can do that on pretty much any app. You're able to mute pages and things like that. And I definitely do that as well. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. And it's more about me than that that person or that page or that business. It's more about me and your Instagram, your TikTok, your Facebook, whatever. That's yours. That's your profile and you have the ability to do that. So I strongly suggest this option as well. So after you go through and curate all your people you're following, then you can go through and mute people that you want to support. You don't want to unfollow, but maybe you just don't want them popping up in your feed right now. Last tip. So... Once you've curated your feed to something that's more positive and supportive for you, and then you've muted things that maybe you're not quite wanting to involve in your life on a day-to-day -day basis, you don't need updates from this person and that person every day, but you want to support them, now it's time to try and work on the scrolling, the scrolling habits. As I mentioned before, I know a lot of us wake up in the morning, grab our phones and scroll, or as we're sitting in bed, we scroll, and I'm 100% guilty of doing that to this day but we can try and work on that a little bit. And the ways that I am trying to do that is I do sometimes make a rule with myself that I'm not even gonna bring my phone into the bedroom at night. So that really eliminates waking up and scrolling and going to bed and scrolling. And you just need to have another option for an alarm clock. And there's lots of options out there for that. You can even just buy an alarm clock. They're really inexpensive these days, but it really will keep the phone out of your life when you first wake up and before you go to bed and you'll replace that habit with reading a book honestly if I read like one page of a book I fall asleep or if I have my phone and I scroll I'm scrolling till like two in the morning other things that I do is that I turn off a lot of my social media apps from having mobile data so when I'm outside in my house I don't have wi-fi I can't access those apps and for me, it just reminds me when I'm out, oh yeah, I'm not wanting to be on my phone. And also when I'm having a date with a friend, I'm out with a family member, I'm at a Christmas party, things like that, I just keep my phone in my bag or my jacket and I don't take it out at all. And I feel like there's this pressure all the time now that we need to record everything. And that's something that I've really tried to let go of, of just documenting every moment of my life. And a lot of times I'll just ask someone else when we're out to take a photo and send it to me. And that way I still have a photo, but I didn't have my phone out because I know when I have my phone out, I tend to check all those apps and things like that. And it just, just lowers the amount of time that I'm on those apps, which in turn really lowers the amount of anxiety I will feel overall. Another thing that I did, especially over the pandemic when things were really boring and it was really hard not to be on your phone all the time because all we were doing was sitting on the couch watching movies day and night. I would put my phone in a place that wasn't within arm's reach and I started doing like arts and crafts when I was watching TV because I have gotten into the habit for sure of wanting to like multitask and always be on my phone when I'm watching TV or a movie or something like that and I don't think that that's good for our focus so what I've done instead is I started cross stitching which keeps my hands busy and gives me something else to do but it's and it's mentally stimulating and it's also productive because I can give those cross stitching projects away as gifts for people, which I have done. You could pick up a new skill like knitting, crocheting, but maybe you're not ready to, to try something in such a mature field, but perhaps you pick up a guitar, or try learning an instrument, just where you notice when you're gonna be on your phone a lot, 
maybe give yourself a different activity that you can do. And I mean, this is entirely up to you. And it's all again, like I said, about being honest, like, if I'm on my phone, I know it brings my mood down. I know it creates more anxiety for me. It makes me feel not good. What step can I take to change this? Or you can just choose to ignore that and just keep scrolling. But I hope you don't. I know in my heart, social media isn't a terrible thing because in a lot of ways, it's really been an amazing thing in my life. I have this YouTube channel, which I really enjoy making videos and editing them and connecting with other people and hearing feedback. I find that to be super fulfilling and fun and creative. I also have a YouTube channel with my friend and that brings us together and we get to talk about fun things. It's on another channel. And then I, of course, enjoy like TikTok and Instagram and Facebook and all these different ways that we can communicate with each other. And for a long time, I kind of let social media take the steering wheel. As you know, there's that algorithm and that can kind of slowly take control over what you're seeing. And I try and be really conscious of that. I have noticed on certain apps, it's even more powerful than others in terms of really narrowing down what you see and censoring everything you see. So it's really hard to expand out of that afterwards. So that's just something to consider as well. And at the end of the day, you are in control. You are in control. I know sometimes it might feel like the apps are in control because we have to use them for this, that, and the other thing, but at the end of the day, you really are in control. And I just want you to feel in the driver's seat when it comes to your experiences on these apps. And I hope that these tips can help you. I hope you get started right away. It really has helped me so much. And the more I've curated down what I'm following and muted things that I didn't want to see and replace some of my scrolling habits with other habits, I feel like I have a much healthier, better relationship with social media and I can go long bouts of times without using it. And I also just don't feel like it's an integral part of my life. And honestly, if everything social media wise was taken from me tomorrow, I know that I would still be really happy with what I have in my life. And I think that's an important part to consider as well. Imagine if those apps were gone tomorrow, what kind of connections do you have right now in real life? Are you following up with your friends, your family, yourself? What kind of relationship do you have with yourself? Because this can all be a big distraction from those really important life things, which is deep, meaningful connections with other human beings. So I hope this helps and Give it a thumbs up if you agree or if you think you're going to try any of those tips and also comment below any pages that we should be following that include things like, I don't know, cute French bulldogs, anything animal related. I love things where people are rescuing animals. I love watching home improvement stuff like that gets me really excited in terms of like the fitness world. I like to follow Meg Boggs. I'll put her page below and just more people that are relatable and real and keep things real and are actually inspiring. And I like just following my friends and family members and things like that too. So thank you so much for tuning in today. I really hope this helps you. And please let me know if there's any topics you want me to touch on in the future, anxiety related or not. I just like talking about anxiety stuff because I've got it and I've been working on it a lot and finding ways to work with it. And when I find things that work for me, I want to share them with you guys. So thanks so much. I'll see you guys in the next one.